So it's the last <laughs> dog of the day. It's let's say the Dior dog. It's the champagne of yesterday, the Dior of today. And um, John, who are you exactly? I don't know. I'm a little bit schizophrenic. Thank yeah. you, Haimo. You look great, by the way. Does anybody think Haimo looks great? Yeah. yeah. Not as good as me, but nevertheless. Um, I am so excited to be uh, speaking in front of a brand I know nothing about, um, because I am, I think Haimo says, thrift store sheep, charity shop sheep, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Uh, so little bitty nutshell, so um, I am a content marketing consultant and I cut my teeth on trying to uh, go to a brand and say, hey, this to Jet, um, you're a little bit out of touch. Uh, you, you don't have the fast bit. Uh, if we're, we're going to take the fast forward forum thing. You're, you're not reactive enough. So it was helping brands do this thing called, uh, which my book was called, it's called News Jacking, but it's called Real Time Marketing. Helping brands feel that there was like some sense of them being relevant in real time. That led to a concept that makes me seem a little bit like a swear word. I think the swear word in marketing is chaos. Ooh, that sounds bad. Oh my God, uh, Mateo just flinched, flinched when I said it even. Um, that's the chaos bit, but then sometimes you meet someone in your life that, that takes you aside and says, um, not everything can be chaotic, John. Sometimes we need, what was that S word that you said? Structure. Structure, structure. <laughs> Have you, are you guys familiar with the concept of structure within marketing? Yeah, of course you are. I'm, I'm getting evil looks, because uh, they have chaos bad, structure good. Is there any way, like, so Carla, I think what one of your many skills is uh, helping brands who are a little bit like me, chaotic, <laughs> but making sense of that. Is that fair to say? Yeah, G okay. giving chaos a rhyme and a reason. Like that, uh, what she said, giving chaos a rhyme and a reason. So, I think that would be a great theme. You know what we should do? We should like make that theme and uh, actually bring to life uh, the chaos to structure continuum. Uh, and we call it the curiosity continuum. But because it's late and we're keeping you from alcohol, <laughs> we decided to scrap our structure for this talk. We're gonna do some, we're gonna introduce stuff, we're gonna go shopping, buy some nice things from Lacoste and Othello. Um, no, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, talk to you a little bit about the continuum and then we're gonna break into groups and do this thing that my man, almost my Scottish twin, calls Purposeless play. Purposeless play. <laughs> yeah. Purposeless play. That's my team. Carlo, if, if I'm purposeless play, what are you? Purposeful. Purpose. Structure, intention. Exactly. How many of you, with a show of hands, relate more to the fact that I have fans on the street? I love this. Uh, <laughs> no, relate more to chaos. Show of hands. Carl, I love you. Mateo, I'm calling out all my friends. Okay. You have just self-identified as being on purposeless play. You are on the purposeless play team. You need to remember who you are because you just raised your hands and committed to me. I need to have at least a few friends. Now, try to rally, try to bring your people. How is it? Just tell it, how That's you? okay, be proud and loud. Everybody who loves structure likes to have a reason for why we're doing things. Raise your hand once it's uh, identified outcome we're looking for. There you go, you're my people. Oh my gosh, you're my people. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, Heather. That you are needs my or doesn't I, need? I, I, thought, I thought we connected over Edelweiss. No, I need, oh, I need God. to yeah. let yeah. go. <laughs> As opposed to OCD. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, there you go, for the OCD people. Yeah. Okay, I, you're at, uh, believe it or not, there are some people you were converting, because Heather, oh. I was so on my team last night after alcohol. She heard me sing. And she heard you sing. Yeah. Okay, so you, you've stolen Heather from me, that's cool. Go. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start off with our little continuum, and um, uh, my man, Dreadpin, has, um, how am I going to, yeah, I'll hold it, I'll be your okay. easel. Okay, it's my lovely easel, Carla. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sell you 
on the curiosity continuum. Uh, Dave talked a lot about dogs. Um, our whole thing was on dogs, so we've had to go scrap and change everything. So, that's <laughs> so uh, we frantically found some other animals. No, no, we had these all along. Um, I am going to talk about this side, because guess what? I'm going to do some live strategic stuff called writing words on a paper. Isn't that what strategy is? Here we go. So what we got is uh, we got, let's call this uh, chaos. Chaos is there, and then we got Carla here. So from chaos to Carla, we're going to call Carla structure. And then we've got not so curious down here, and obviously curious up here. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like for you to go with me on a flight of fancy. Um, there is an animal that up until the 1700s, people in Europe thought was a joke. They, they thought, sorry, it doesn't even exist. It's, a, it's, it's like a mermaid. It's a figment of your American and South American uh, imaginations. Um, it has the bill of a duck. It has the tail of a beaver. It has the feet of an otter. And it lays eggs like a chicken. For, a little, for the first co Constant Curiosity Award, that, that I'm going to give out today. Uh, can anyone name what that animal is? Steve. <laughs> Who said that? Steve. Right. Plata, uh, Steve was the right answer, but, um, but, <laughs> but Platypus is the second to right answer. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you cash those in for a magnum of champagne from Hymo's tab. Um, so uh, the platypus is, believe it or not, uh, pure chaos, uh, and they're curious as hell. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help my team unpack that with lots of constraints, added things that you're not going to expect, uh, kick in the seat of the pants. It's, it's going to be wild. We're doing that. But then, actually, Carla, I'm going to be your, uh, do you mind talking us through whatever yeah, the hell that right. is? <laughs> So what we have on this end of the scale, so here we start out with chaos, just the randomness of what shows up and how things show up, but still very curious. Now if you look on the other side of this end, so still highly, highly curious, and I think of this as, when I think of structure, I think a lot of uh, business to business, industrial, manufacturing, kind of companies like that, full of engineers or full of scientists, <coughs> or full, of, full of those kind of professionals, but still very curious. So this is what we label as a gazelle. So gazelles function really well together, um, curious about the area around them, but when they, some really interesting statistics about gazelles is that, is that they, at the, uh, in just a few seconds, can get up to a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. And they can sustain 50 kilometers per hour for a long period of time. So when we look at companies who function like this, these are the companies that are able to come together, they can, they're curious and it allows them to innovate quickly and in a well-structured outcome because what they do is they look at what is it we're trying to solve and what are we working toward and how can that curiosity fill, fuel the creativity and the innovation behind what it is that we need. Now gazelles can move fast and in large herds at a time. So they look very fluid when they're doing this. And that's what the companies who, who function in this quadrant, that's what they're able to do. They have tens of thousands of employees that they're able to move in fluid moments, um, in fluidity as they look at curiosity and still putting structure around it so that all those left brain people in the organization don't lose their mind in the uh, lack of complexity in these things. So that's our top end that focuses really on the curiosity part. And now we come to the moment of truth. <laughs> because I feel like not all of you would admit to being a platypus or a gazelle. Is that fair to say that the companies that you represent are not 100% curious in responding to all of you, everything in a curious way? 
I think it probably is fair. So I would like for us to move you from here to here tonight uh, when we break into teams. I got to tell you what, you're probably not as bad as this, but let me tell you what the rock bottom, not so curious and chaotic situation is. So uh, there is an animal uh, in the London Zoo. It's the only animal that um, you're allowed to go up and touch and love and do whatever you want with because the people in the zoo basically said, John, we can't move this thing out of the tree. Like it is literally in the tree. We, we try to protect you from its rabies and all the things that it has, but it's so freaking lazy that we just let it stay there. If you want to climb the tree and get a disease, get the disease. That is, who said it first? I think it's Carl. What team are you on? Heather, we got. I like honesty. I like honesty. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are you guys on opposite teams? Because uh, Heather's structure. You're my chaotic man. Oh, very good. I didn't want you to win that. I didn't know. Literally, give it to Heather. She's defected. I gave it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's my man. Now, this tall freaking. I'm sorry. I don't, you, you're gonna have to do this other one. <laughs> the, the tall one, the one we have over here, some of you might have an idea what this animal is, but when we look at this animal, what we see is that it's closely related to a crane or a heron, um, a bird like that, but the difference between a crane and a heron and this animal is that cranes and herons stick their neck out and they fly. So they're willing to take that risk when we talk about other people, businesses sticking their neck out. But this animal isn't doing that. And it's highly structured, but it doesn't want to pay attention to what's going on in the world around it. When push comes to shove, it sticks its head in the ground. Who knows what this animal is? Ostrich. Ostrich, that's right. You want to give a yes. point over here? Okay. Why do you get all the fun people? Okay. You know, and it's interesting as we look at companies and their leadership and how they approach curiosity and what they say and what they do when it comes to curiosity. Because executives in a company will say, this is something that we really want to bring out in our employees. We value it a lot. It means a lot. But then what they do is that they don't support it when it comes time to actually help their employees become curious. Because what they're afraid of is that you can't manage curiosity. It's too chaotic. Yeah, indeed. So they think that if you're a curious company, ping pong balls are flying around everywhere. You know, there's uh, nothing's ever going to get done. How do we manage that? And so therefore, they don't allow people time to be curious because they think it's inefficient. They think it takes time away from what they really should be doing. And they're afraid that the cost of doing business is going to go up. So that's our challenge in how we start to move people from not so curious up to being curious and still letting them function in the realm of structure to chaos that's really true for their culture and how they see it expressed. Now, uh, okay, Carla, so th this is fine, but I I'm sorry, I have to, I have to butt in here, um, but we have really amazing, smart people here. Uh, I actually think we need to give them a vision of success of what, like, the most curious and chaotic uh, brand would look like uh, and what a, a curious, very structured brand would look like in the real world. Yeah. Cause when, when, when you actually deliver the brief to them that they're going to be working on, they need to have a gold standard. So, has anybody ever heard of the Magic Castle Hotel uh, and Suites? <laughs> Young David has. I love that. I want to sit on your lap for that because I feel warm. <laughs> I, feel, I feel warm to you. Uh, has anybody else heard of the Magic Hero? Okay. Is somebody over here? Oh, oh, who, 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 who? Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry to like run over and like jump. Not going to sit on your lap. Once you sat on the lap, the hand really went down. <laughs> so, let me paint a picture for you. TripAdvisor. You've all been there. Los Angeles. Some of you have been there. So, the number one hotel in Los Angeles. Um, is the, the W Hotel, one of the fancy ones. The number two hotel is Magic Castle Hotel and Suites. Paimo, why are they number two? Are they as 
well put together as you? <laughs> no idea. They're not. That's good. Uh, in <laughs> fact, it's a 1950s kind of crappy little office block hotel. Uh, we, in America, we call them like a motel or a mo uh, motel six. It's a it's horrible place. So they slapped some yellow paint on it. And they went to number two in the TripAdvisor ratings. Not for the yellow paint. They went because they climbed into the brains of the people that they were trying to reach and said, we're just going to try some stuff. We're going to try some boring stuff. We're going to try some fun stuff. We're going to just see what sticks. You know what they got international news uh, headlines for? Uh, a telephone. Like, Because uh, I'm old, I would say one of these things. Uh, kids, as Pete told me, it, this, is a, this is the sign of the telephone now. Um, okay, they put a telephone by the pool. They put a telephone by the pool. Imagine this was a telephone, like a big red, like a proper telephone. Um, and they put two words by it, and it was just popsicle hotline. What the hell does that mean? Popsicle hotline. Don't know. I am curious, though. So I'm going to go up, sit on Dave's lap again, pre pretending that this is a hotline. I get on the phone, and I say, uh, hello? And they're like, um, what, uh, orange, grape, or strawberry? And you're like, uh, great, uh, okay. And then the content experience comes up. That was the name of Carla's book. The content experience comes up because this lady or man uh, with white gloves, it, like, the, like the Bell um, Rose Hotel we stay in, uh, comes up on it with a silver tray and lets you pick the, the popsicle, very good, that you ordered. <laughs> and people are like, that's kind of cool. The kids are like lining up and like, I I'm getting my popsicle from the hotline. That is the number one creative way. But then when you look on TripAdvisor, it's like, oh my God, that's not the reason they're getting the top reviews. They've got two, I hate to admit this, sorry to tar you with this brush. They've got two structured bits of content that, that get them the top views. The chaos gets in the headlines. The structured bits are, they do, they're the only hotel that I've ever heard of that gives you free laundry. If you soil your clothes or, or just whatever, just they will, yeah, this happens. happens. We're all humans. <laughs> I've got diapers. But if, too many if you have an accident, they will come and, and, and do your clothes for free. That's the number one, that's the number two reason they get the top reviews. The number one reason is free candy from your childhood. Like they've got a range of candy from the childhood of uh, anyone who stays there. And so free candy, free laundry, and third is the is the chaotic brainstorm which led to the experience of the hot That's what I want us to do for the brief that Carla is going to give you. But, Carla, can you, I don't want to have all the fun because everyone was loving my idea. <laughs> it's not my idea, I just stole it from a, a guy called Jay Bear. So, um, can I hold this while Absolutely. you um, paint a picture of what your structured people's success will look like? Absolutely. So when we look at these, the gazelles, the ones who are able to look around and be curious and still have structure around it, the company that I look at is an industrial digital technology company called Emerson. Emerson Electric in St. Louis, Missouri. They're 127 years old. They're just full of engineers, 110,000 employees worldwide. But what they found is that they're really, really good at innovation because they're so curious about their customers and so curious about how other things work around in other industries and in other types of businesses. So for an example, their head of marketing, her name is Kathy, and um, she has a son who's a junior in college, and he loves to watch YouTube videos. So she'll sit down and she'll watch YouTube videos with him. And she was digging through YouTube videos one night, and there's one of um, dads and daughters playing Barbie that Barbie came out with. And it's so cute because the dads are, you know, playing with the Ken dolls and, and uh, you know, talking about what it means to play with dolls as a man, as a dad. And then also what it's like to have that bond with their daughter with something that they really, really love to do. So she was watching that. She was curious about what actually made that work. And then she could see it was about things like um, the humanness of it, of, of dads talking about what it means to have a close relationship with their daughters. With, um, and then to talk about what it's like to be a guy who plays with dolls and all these perceptions about this father-daughter relationship. 
And she said what was really beautiful about it is that when you dug into it, it was the true authenticity of how these people felt. Um, it was a story that, for the most part, was told through the eyes of children as well, as, they t as the daughters talked about what it was like to play with their dads. And she took those ideas behind what made it work, and then that was the foundation of what she brought into her own company and how they started to launch a values campaign that talked about why Emerson is innovative and how they help their um, customers solve the toughest problem. And so it was a way that they were able to bring something new and different into their organization through a structure that she repeats over and over and over again. And she sees that in other parts of the world and other parts of their lives that they like, and they bring that inspiration in. And it's a simple, repeatable process. It's a structure to their curiosity. So that's what we'll be looking at with the structure team for our exercise. Okay, now uh, in the true spirit of fast forwarded forum, we need to fast, in a fast like way, move forward and get into our little forums. I need chaos over here. If you raise your hand for chaos, you have to be on this side of the room. The line of demarcation is right here with this table. Structure, chaos, chaos, structure. And uh, I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds to get there. And I'm going to start briefing the chaos team. Okay, you just stay right there. You don't move the muscle. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, by the way, if you feel like you want to defect because you don't like the presenter who's presenting chaos, uh, it's too late. You've already committed to um, Carla is better looking, though. Uh, and just uh, actually better put together. Um, okay. So the structure team are being a little bit loud. Um, I want everyone to hear every, every brief. So structure, structure, you guys... Um, Pipe down. That's being a little bit too chaotic for me. Um, We're gonna line up in rows. So here we go. I want I want the structured people to still listen to the chaos brief. Um, here we go. So chaos people, this is this is our brief in a nutshell. It pisses me off so much. What we do. Um, what we do is we say. There's a rule. Oh, look at that rule. I'm not going to do that. Our brief is to rebrand. We're trying to create a, a fast forward community here. We are going to be coming back here every year. We need to rebrand San Tropez where it appeals to people that aren't just old. We need <laughs> to uh, find a way to make this place happen again. Okay? What we're going to do is we're the, the, the essence of San Tropez right now that pisses me off is when people just tell me, no, this is what to do, this is what you have to do. This is an example in my hand of what I hate about San Tropez. I hate being told what to do. Last night, I got home, I'd had a little too much to drink. All of a sudden, there was a message in my mirror and it was like, remove makeup. Remove makeup, please remove your makeup. I don't wanna to be told to remove my makeup. <laughs> You cannot remove this. If you see what's underneath this, <laughs> if you see what's underneath this, Martin, you will not love me tonight. No. <laughs> see, I told you. So we are going to not do what we're told. We are going to basically inject humor, fun. We are going, this is called uh, Ballsy On Demand. There are several different things that we're gonna throw into our content. All of our ideas have to use at least one of these random cards it's called Ballsy On Demand. We will come up with ideas that are a little bit left of center because we have what you call tension and a restraint. We have to rebrand Santa Fe to make it young and cool again in any way we can, but it has to, every team has to have one card. You need to break into teams of four. Break into teams of four and, our, and the people who um, cannot be on the same team. Uh, we have uh, team co-captain Mateo. Team co-captain Dave, I'm picking, I'm, team co-captain Carl, uh, team co-captain Pete. You guys are co-captains because you need to go up to three people right now that you have not spoken to and announce that one of them is captain and going to be doing all the speaking for your presentation. Ready and go. Okay, structure team. We have the same challenge that we're going to be bringing in. What we're going to do is to 
You guys have a card? Yeah. Okay, rebrand. So you, have, you, have, you now have four minutes. You guys have to decide. You have to decide. You have to decide. And you have four minutes to put that together. Okay. 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 And now you're out of now we have three in the
Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, we are not here to present. What is your idea? We don't have an idea. We don't have an idea. We We're ready. Just build the beam. I don't even know what the process is because literally you only have two So uh, what we have here is um, we've got two ideas. Uh, I need, um, I need uh, your idea in 30 seconds. Starting now. Yeah. Okay. So um, Sancho Bay is very exclusive and very expensive. Um, to get more young people, we want to like uh, send the tattoo gun. Yeah! yeah. 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 Put yourself a permanent tattoo on your arm, or the more exposed it is, the more discount you get for the whole city. That's great. We're tattooing the shit out of this whole place. Bring it on back. In 30 seconds, you guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. 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 of San Tropez are among the people that we're going to impress, so the younger people. We would understand what it is that they quite like about San Tropez and what it is that they don't like. We would build on what they like and we would also try to understand what their holiday, desired holiday destination would have. Once we understand that, we would partner with the right companies to have events here. For instance, if they like risk and edge, we would go and partner with Red Bull and have one of their events here. I see a partnership. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, next group. Okay, so we started with an avatar and we decided we wanted to target German speaking millennials. And what we're going to be doing is in the month of June, it's going to be Entrepreneur Month. We're bringing in the big brands, the vodkas, the top, the tequilas, the beer brands, donating all of the alcohol. We're going to make the first week of June all alcohol free on our events. 
and it's going to we're going to pull in six to ten VCs from Silicon Valley who will come and fund the top German-speaking entrepreneurs. Excellent. Brilliant. And now we're going to we're going to find out the winner. Find out the winner is the one who's still standing. Oh, you can take her. Because curiosity can come in all parts of the continuum. There's chaos that works for curiosity. There's structure that works for it. And what you have to do is be able to recognize it for your own company, and actually you personally, and just honor that and understand that curiosity shows up in different ways. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now let's go get drunk. <laughs> <laughs>